<clears throat> hey guys, M12 Wardog here, back with another video. Today, we are doing our strategy guide for Italian Wars, and today's mission is Titans of Tundra. Now, for this one, you can see I have a lot of power, a lot of speed. And perfect for technique for my high score, giving me a total of an A ranking with a total of 87% for this mission. Um, in order to pass it though, you just need to follow all the objectives. Score does not really matter. In the matter of me taking the time to explain to you what I'm doing and why I'm using this strategy and what situations and all that stuff, speed is not really going to be be a big factor here, although when you're doing it yourself, provided you're not doing this as you're following along, you've watched it through, then then do what I did, then you should be fine. And maybe you'll have a little bit more speed. Now, I did explore two main key strategies on how to go about something, but the first part is usually the same for both of them. I actually did a live stream where I test out multiple theories as to what I'm going to do. I think I played this level like three times, figured it out, then I went back, watched it, and then reanalyzed it. Although, when, after the first three times I, I played it, I was done. I didn't live stream anymore. That was actually, uh, what did I do? I actually, what I did is, uh, I live streamed that on, um, a channel. Well, Team Warfleets, um, some of my uh, friends from my uh, RuneScape clan are going to join it. They're not active members yet because they don't have a streaming setup, but um, we mainly do a lot of uh, charity streaming over there for OSD, so feel free to check that out. Uh, and let's just hop into this. All right. Time to shift the balance of powers. Cook. Okay. Do not leave your designated missionary or I will be going absent well on leave. Your CO will return you to your battlefield. Okay. Hmm. Think for you this time, Commander. Okay. So your main objective here is not to wipe out everyone on the map here. Your main objective here... Whoops. If I can zoom out is to take out all eight heavy tanks. And you can see some are by themselves, some are closer together. There, This is a little bit bigger of a battlefield, I would say. Almost as big as the Castle Potemkin one. Uh, and we got a job to do. Now, I may not go for every single one of these, but um, there are certain things that you may not need to do. You may. It really depends upon... What particular units get focus fired in gunfights and how much health people have. But generally, I'm going to do the one that I found that best fits us for this mission. That will best work to get the mission done. And then I will go back on the map here and I will show you some of the other strategies that I considered doing before we uh, get in here. Before we... Uh, before we uh, end off the video and all that stuff. Alright. So. As you can see here. The first heavy tank is right in front of you. Pretty much. You spawn in as a bazooka vet. This is good. So what you want to do. Is grab all of your bazooka vets. And have them follow you here. Post up right next to this little hill here. And don't try to get too close to this hill here. Because... Then you'll just be bazooka on bazooka, and you combine that with the fact that you're going to have a heavy tank come at you also as well, which is bad. So what you want to do is hold down the A button and charge your weapon, because, I mean, first attack's going to be super powerful. Then you want to lock on when you get the chance. And when they get a little bit closer, so they don't track to any other units such as gunships, that you can see here. You want them to open fire, and don't forget to constantly circle the enemy, so that their MG on there cannot get there. Now, another thing you want to do is tell your units to run and walk there, and move there. And the reason for that is if they have our 
The reason if they do that, the reason why I do that is if they need a med pack, they can go and grab it. Similar to the strategy where I told you to tell them to group up in between waves on the Assault on Windbreak Ridge where the med packs are so that they can grab them if they need them. Alright, so now what we want to do is go into the Light Recon, my favorite vehicle, because you can issue rapid fire deployment orders to deploy over there, attack that thing, then go over here, do that very quickly. Very fast. It's very easy to use. And we are going to be taking some riflemen with us and some missile vets. Now we're going to wait here, though. Halfway between... A little bit more than halfway between our battalion and theirs. Now we're going to tell the missile vets to wait here so they're a little bit closer to us than the rest of our battalion. And those will be on standby. You'll find out in a minute why. And then what we want to do is drive up here. And tell your uh, riflemen to uh, fire at them. Now the main thing you want to do here is when you focus on your units. You want to make sure that you don't grab the attention of the gunship. If you do that, that's fine. Usually you don't want to fire at it, though, and usually more often than not. And usually if you are doing that, it usually is going to be because you fire at the gunship with the light recon in my experiences. Alright. Yeah, we got an enemy rifle grunt there. Okay. Sometimes he doesn't walk that close, but if he does, you can sort of lure him out with your light recon. And just have him walk into a massacre of squads of riflemen and other infantry firing at him. And instantly take him out in seconds. Alright. Now, this is what I call the missile vet perch hill. Because they can perch up here and destroy as many as up to, I think, like three different gunships. Because they all come within firing range of a missile vet that could be posted here. So, I tell them... And I'm going to tell them, stop following me and have my uh, my whole battalion and have my uh, missile vets here. And you got to watch the skies for these guys. It's best to take them out now rather than engage and then have another uh, gunship uh, side to... Uh, Hop in the fight and then have another thing to worry about on top of what you're already dealing with. If you can take this out and deal with the gunship by itself, rather than dealing with that and a heavy tank at the same time, you're actually going to do much better. The whole point here is to either overpower at the point of attack, ergo five, five missile vets versus one gunship, or outnumber at the point of attack. Which, technically, I'm doing both here because missile vets are designed to take down gunships, and so forth. Now, of course, their missiles are explosives, and true, they do not lock on to tanks. If you get close enough, you can't hit them, but they don't direct fire at them, and you're not gonna be good at it. It's like the... It's sort of, in my opinion, like the assault vet, in the way that it has the ability to damage vehicles. It's not intended to, but due to the armor-piercing rounds, it can. It's not designed to like a bazooka vet would. Sort of, you can apply that logic to um, ground-based vehicles. It's kind of hard to hit the infantry, I can tell you. Especially the infantry is going to be hard to hit with the missile vet. And then again, I don't know why you'd be charging missile vets in at a squad of rifle vets. On a squad of rifle grunts anyway, but that's just uh, something you want to do. Okay, so once you've taken out all of those, you need to go... And position all of your units here on this side of the hill. Now, normally I consider, oh, wait here, take them out one by one, but then that means we're a lot closer to the infantry and they can get us if we focus on taking the out the gunship that was flying around in this area of the skies up here. All right, so now our next objective is to not let everyone go in. The reason for this is that this heavy tank is right here. And if you play it long enough, you know that it goes to about here, then all the way up here. So at one point, 
You could be dealing with three tanks if you're at this intersection, and that's three heavy tanks. They can focus fire a tank. It's done for, because we only have four light tanks, and they have eight heavy tanks. So we're sort of outnumbered and outpowered if you just want to deploy the heavy tanks and the light tanks all in one battle. The heavy tanks are going to win, which is why we need to convert it, convert the battle, and pick our engage, convert it to our side, make it easier for us, and pick our battles in the way that we want to. So I'm going to usually uh, do this, get all these guys to follow me, will come after me. Then I get my riflemen to follow me, and the reason why I'm not telling them to attack is because they'll get close, and I don't want them to attract the attention of that heavy tank. That is our main priority, is not to do that. Okay. They got that. Now I'm going to slowly creep up on them. Take them out. You usually want to check the map because there's usually uh, one guy that's behind here that you could fire at and it usually doesn't come towards you until you fire at him from behind here. I don't know why. So you'd have to get on the other side in order to do that. Alright. Grabbed a med pack like they needed. Now I'm going to tell these guys to move up a little bit more. Have these follow me. And sometimes, not always, but this rifleman does run out. And they do go here. Now, we're going to try and take out these two rifle grunts here. With avoiding attracting attention from this heavy tank. Then from here, we're going to go over here. Going up the gigantic mountain here is going to be our last priority. There's two ways you can do it. One way I find is to be better than the other, but the other way is much faster, but more riskier. So, uh, you gotta have that in mind when you uh, do this. Alright. Now, this rifle grunt is behind the sandbag, so it's not going to want to come out of cover. So, I'm actually going to drive back and forth to reduce the damage to my, uh, vehicle here. Check this. Still got the guy on the outside there. Alright. Now what we want to do is tell those guys to stay there. We're going to have our light tanks and our bazooka vets follow us. What we want to do is get them here. And then when the tank is closer to this structure here, you want to fire at it. Even if you're not going to hit it with the first shot, just so that you can get it to stay here. You don't want it to go to that intersection where all three heavy tanks are. You want to engage as many heavy tanks as you can by themselves, where you can outnumber and overpower them. If you engage with two or more, they can focus fire units and do some severe damage to it. There's that rifle grunt that didn't want to come out and fight. And he's gone. Now we're going to go here. And we're going to go to this campsite here. Now, if you had units that focus fired one of your vehicles a little bit more than all the others. As you can see, my t light recon needs some health. This tent specifically has one. Um, If you have uh, another way to find out if other tents have them, I do not know if other tents do. But I know that this that's the one that has them in this campsite here. Um, you can figure that out by just bringing a weak tank and swapping off from it. And it will automatically drive into a tent that has one and pick up the thing that it needs. The jerry can that heals it. Alright. Now, once we're in this situation, we want, once again, our bazooka vets to follow us. And... I almost told the wrong unit to attack. And then you want to go there and tell them to attack. Alright. Now, another thing you want to know is if you engage too close, 
Your bazooka vets will get too close to these riflemen. Your bazooka vets will get swarmed and taken down easily by rifle guns. In the tutorial, you probably learned that the slow-moving projectiles are easy to avoid, which is why rifle guns are easy to take down a bazooka vets. Now, you do want to note that you are next to a little lake here, and if water pretty much touches your vehicle, it pretty much kills it instantly. Almost as if it's an infantry unit being fired upon by a flame vet. Alright. Now, there's one of two ways you can engage this tank here. Which, at one point, you could stop and fire it here. You may risk getting flanked by these infantry riflemen here. If they want to jump down the side of the hill. Which sometimes they do. But you have... But if you bring your whole battalion, the ones that are good at taking out the tank will do that. And then you can assign the ones to do that. Or you could go here, take out these two bazooka vets, take out this, and then wait for it to come back here and then focus fire and draw it out to about here, where this heavy tank is. Either one I find is just as good as the other. But for now, seeing as we're down here, I might as well go for it. The only risk you have, though, is that you want to... Make sure you're doing it when there's not a gunship around, which is one of the key things here. So you can always check the map. It went down there. That's great. All right. You can always check the map to see where that where that uh, gunship's going. I think it's this one. Yeah, I don't know where it's... Oh, it's coming back around. Okay, I guess I'm not going to get it a lock on it for the missile vets yet. Alright. Constantly checking. Getting ready. Alright. Stay back. Have this follow us. And have these guys attack. When you are circling the heavy tank, try and make sure if you do get hit, which which is n not a... G I wouldn't say it's not a bad idea. Uh... Alright. Trying to get the attention of that gunship. Wait for it to get close. Alright. Sometimes you have to play a waiting game with the gunships. It's kind of annoying. Although, it definitely does get the job done once you, uh... Once you get a lock on it. Alright. Now it's going to engage us. We have the upper hand here. And numbering that one unit with our whole battalion. And so forth. Alright. Now sometimes, infantry does fall over the mountain and try to flank you there. Although it's pretty much impossible to climb up it, but you can go down it. So you usually have to drive around if you want to do that. Then you want to regroup at this little castle tower-like thing here. Whatever you want to call it. If you want to make up your own code name for this location, you can. Although you're not really communicating with anyone other than yourself. So, and you really can't use um, code name commands for um, your battalion. But if you want to do that, you can. All right. So, I'm not telling my whole battalion to follow me, but I am getting uh, my riflemen to. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell them to go there and attack that. Then, get my whole battalion to follow me. That way, 
they come up to support us from behind, but the units that can uh, charge in and take out the uh, Zukovets do so. And if possible, maybe be supported with supporting fire from other units. Okay, he's probably going to go grab that health back. Alright, now you want to swap to your tanks. Tell everyone to go here. Your bazooka vet and your rifleman. And this time you want to flank them from both sides because you have the option to do so. So what you're going to do is tell your infantry, your bazooka vets to go that way. And then get your light tanks to go here and fire at them. Now, if you don't take forever, if you don't take forever to get there, you should be fine and you won't lose, uh, and you won't lose any, uh, and you won't lo pretty much lose any, uh, uh, bazooka vets, although, uh, you can um, lose them if you take forever. It's kind of a thing. Now, up here on the mountain, on this little hill here, few infantry riflemen, but there is med packs that your infantry can use. Only go back there if you need them. Um, what you could do is go up there with the light recon, which is what I've done before, take out the infantry, and, uh, and then call in the infantry that need it the most, and they can heal up. Now, I'm not going to do this because that takes time, and we're all screwed by time, but I don't need to do it at this current moment, as it looks like all of my units have most of their health. If anything, I would say the Bazooka Vets are the worst off, or it's a close tie between the Bazooka Vets and the Riflemen, but then again, I'm assigning them correctly to the point where it does not matter. Now, at this point, you realize... There are three tanks left. We have to go up a mountain. Now, there are two ways to go about this, and this is the main key thing that I tested in this live stream that I did, which is sort of like behind the scenes on how I make these. You could go here, deal with these infantry units here. You're going to have to take out this, but the second you engage with these guys, those two heavy tanks are going to see you, and it pretty much is going to be a crap storm you do not want to deal with. This is great if you want to move fast and constantly get engaged, and attract the attention of all the units so they'll engage with you all at once, which is maybe not a good thing seeing as they have heavy tanks and you have light tanks. Or you could go up through here, take out this one by itself, then go here, alert this infantry because it's so far away in the way the mountain is with the topography of it. They won't be able to see you so much. It's probably that you don't send a lot of gunfire over here where those heavy tanks are, and you should be fine. As well as um, doing the proper and necessary um, things to get rid of uh, gunships in the area, which there's only one left. After that, your missile vets pretty much become useless, but uh, because they can't really do anything else, but that is fine. They can pretty much act like a shotgun to um, for tanks if they get real close because it's so inaccurate. Their missile... When they lock onto ground units, because they simply can't, it's below radar. Which is also why if you're being fired at from missile vets from um, any kind of uh, any kind of uh, uh, aircraft that you're in and you're being fired at missile vets, just try and go low, below the radar, and hope that it doesn't get a lock on you. Now, the one thing I like about this is the great range that it has. You may not be able to lock onto a unit. Or if you do, you may not be able to fire at it, unlike this one, it says that we can. I'm doing damage to it. You can lure out some of these infantry units, which is actually quite a good idea. See? The bazooka vet's moving. Hopefully you can lure it out so that you don't deal with that and a heavy tank at once. Which sometimes I thought would be a great idea. And I have tried this every single time that I've done it, but it doesn't seem like they move out of their position. Although you can get the heavy tank to come after you and engage them on your own terms. Which is actually quite good if you know what you're doing. 
Now I'm going to get these guys to follow me down here and take control of a heavy tank and then tell them to engage here. Now you got to be ready for this and you don't want to take forever. Otherwise, you're going to have units that lose some health, like the bazooka vets here. Go grab your health packs. Now, if you do want to figure out how many uh, health packs that you get per vehicle, it is the equivalent to the number of crew that they have. Uh, the GameCube game um, case that I have came with a little booklet. It tells you how many crew they have, so that will usually be a good way to determine how this works. All right. So now I'm going to tell these guys to go there. Engage that bazooka vet. Now, if your units do get in water, your infantry units, that is, that is fine. Just try and get them swim to a coastline and get them out of the water as soon as possible. They won't drown right away, but they will be weighed down by their, um, by their, uh, gear eventually, and it, and they will, uh, and they will drown eventually, but not right away. Alright, let's just get everyone to come up the hill here. Tell these guys to stop. Get the bazooka vets here. And the rifle runs in case they start firing. In case these guys start firing on us. If we get too close, they can provide covering fire. While we move a little bit ahead. Closer to the root of the gunship. So that we can fire at it and bring it down as well. And trust me. You really can be screwed over. If you, uh... If you don't have missile vets and you still have gunships left. I purposely lost all my uh, missile vets for the sake of just figuring out how bad it was. For the sake of an analysis of how important it was. And get a better idea of how important it is to have that kind of stuff. I'll do that. So I can better my own strategies and whatnot. Anyway. It's down. And our next mission is to bring our whole unit up with us. Lay down some fire on these guys. Get them to move. Hopefully come at us. Now Rifle Grunt's just going to stand there and he's going to get damaged apparently. Nope, he moved into cover. He didn't want to take us on. What are you doing all the way? I'm. I don't know why my rifle, rifle grunt, not rifle vet. <laughs> that is doing it. All right. Okay. I constantly am swapping between uh, and telling them to engage and telling them to stop. You don't want them to go too far. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid I might get too many uh, uh, people to come after us. Alright. Which is why you want to have your light recon lure out people. Always want to be careful of this ridge here. If you see a heavy vehicle come over it, tell all of your units to fire at it. And this is the part where you are going to be engaging with the most units versus the most of your units as well. And they moved ahead, which is going to attract a lot of units. All right. Apparently, they don't know how to come to me.
This bazooka vet is not following orders. Stay close here. Alright, now let's check the map. What do we have here? Rifle, rifle, flame. Alright. Stay behind. I'm gonna go up over this ridge. See what's there. My main objective here is to try and get these guys to come to us and fight us on our own terms. And that's the main thing I'm trying to do here. Now, if they're in cover, they're never going to do it. But if you flank them and get them out of cover, that's a whole nother story. Now, the reason why I'm not bringing the tank is that it definitely brings attention gets the attention of all the heavy tanks, and it's definitely going to make them come after you right away, and you don't want to do that. Although, you do see on my screen there are some med packs, which is stuff you definitely want. And it's really unpredictable, because sometimes when, when, when they follow you, if they see an enemy, they'll engage them. But it usually is too late because then it will bring the attention of all the tanks and whatnot that you don't want to get to follow you and whatnot. All right. This flame vet is coming towards us. This is good. Flame vets don't do that much damage. Alright! So once you thin out the herd of infantry... Here... I did my job here. I got a heavy tank to follow us. But on the downside to this is that you always have heavy tanks. You'll always have these two heavy tanks fighting you, no matter what. You cannot attract the attention of one without attracting the attention of the other. And this is the part where, where you really lose a lot of infantry. It's kind of hard to engage on a good terms. With only fighting one heavy tank at a time, especially when attracting the attention of one automatically attracts the attention of the other. It's hard because you fire at one, it brings both of them. Uh, but nonetheless, you have to be ready with the tanks and just tell them to go in. Although I didn't want to bring them too close because, because I did my best to bring out one. Normally you won't. Usually, um, like, like, nine out of ten times you will not attract bring out one tank, you'll bring out both of them or none at all. So when you do do it, it's gonna hurt. But it's the best way I've learned. Um, normally I would do this a little bit faster if I had, if I didn't have, if I didn't take the time to explain it and whatnot. But then again, I do like doing this. Making all these strategy guides and all this stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did take the time to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below, would be highly appreciated, and I will see you guys later in another video. Bye-bye.